In this video, I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to trade and be successful with it. There are many strategies that you can use whenever it comes to trading, but focusing on just one is key. I'm going to be showing you the strategy that I find to be the most simple and effective strategy out there. So be sure to watch until the end because everything that I say in this video will be important when it comes to trading. All right, so here we are in trading view. This is the online platform. This is what it's going to look like when you pull up to the website. Let's say there's something specific I want to do. I'm going to click on the search box and let's actually look at NVIDIA. So NVDA. And now from there, I'm going to go and I'm going to click launch chart. And that brings us here. Now from here, this is where all the work goes in. This is where we're going to come and clean up the chart. Now off the bat, the first thing I want to change is I want to get rid of all this down here. It can be helpful to know the volume, but if you look over here, you can see you have a volume candle that comes up into this green candle. And it's not a good look, depending on what, like how zoomed in you are and the ranges and everything, this just isn't a good look. So really wanna get through on that. So how you're gonna be able to customize everything, if you double click or double click on a candle, you get to come in here into the chart settings. So here, right here, I'm under symbols. I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to just change what I would change. All right, so first, the body of the candles. The first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is actually come in here and change the color of our bodies. Not our physical body, but the body of these candles, all right? So you see it's red and green here. You can adjust it to your liking, but there's a lot of psychology going on with red and green. Uh, there's a lot of fear response for red, so I'm going to change the red candles to black and I am going to turn the green candles to some form of light color. Let's, I think I like blue. I like this blue right here. So we got the green candles. They're now a shade of blue or actually let's make it this blue. And here we are. But these candles still look really ugly. So we're going to come in here and fix that even more. Now there are borders to this, these candles and what we're going to do give them a nice black outline. It's gonna make them look a lot better. All right, so right there, looks a lot better. And then what you're gonna wanna do is come to the wicks, make them black, all right? So now that you see these candles coming from where we started, and here, if we go back, coming from this all the way, you see where we started, going back, doing that same stuff we just did, going back, making the wicks black and the borders black, it already looks so much better. Now going on, there are a lot of people that say only use their regular trading sessions, but what you're gonna wanna do is turn on extended hours so you get all the data. Wanna throw in, I'm not a financial advisor, this isn't financial advice, but why would you not use all the data you had available to you when making an assessment? So because of that, we're gonna turn on extended hours and you'll notice the extended hours are a different color. So what you're gonna to wanna to do, come on these, turn the opacity down, come to the other one, opacity down. Now it's smooth, clean, and you don't have to worry about that. All right, next up, precision. Don't mess with that time zone. That's unique to you. So now we're gonna move on down to status line. So this is all kind of prefer preferences. I like to keep the logo on. That's just this right here. Notice if we turn that off, that's gone. Title, that's going to remove that. All right. And it's trying to get me to pay. I'm on a free account right now. But yeah, if I want to pay, I would use that link down below in the description. Let me refresh this to get rid of this. Back where we were, title, it's going to be this right here. Open market status, where is that at? Okay, so this right here just lets you, it's, I think it's legit just this O right here. I'm gonna take that off. OHLC values, that's all this right here. That's personally too much for me. This is about cleaning up your chart. Bar change values, I personally don't need that on my chart, so I take that off. And then we have all this over here, which is, gives me most of the data I need. Now going on, I said I do like to leave this up here. So under symbol, this is what I have. 
and then indicators I don't have any on my charts but here let's add one on here just so you can see so I'm gonna add an EMA okay they want me to join so I'm not going to do that right now but this is something for you to play around with on your own but yeah you can come in here I personally on mine I leave the titles for my indicators it'll usually show up right here and you'll actually see okay it looks like I have volume and then the arguments I have that turned off and then you'll notice down here we still have the volume so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come here X out of that and now the chart looks so much cleaner already and moving on we have scales and lines leave that on I personally just leave all this just like this all this looks good to me then canvas uh, this is where some of you may have preferences and change the background to solid the grid line I'm personally I, I personally prefer to have none that's another way you really clean it up uh, let's go back and do that grid lines messy chart none so much cleaner so smooth all right going on crosshair I think those were the lines for the grid so that shouldn't really matter and then going on the scales none of this matters and then one other thing I want to do is come in here change the background color and yeah that's nice right there now I'm gonna hit OK there you have it this is how you clean up your chart all right so here we are in trading view this is actually the desktop platform that I'm showing you uh, I'm going to go to the trading view website just because I know not everyone wants to download the platform on their computer I just wanted to start this out by showing you there is a desktop platform that you can download from the website and it's pretty much the exact same thing now that I've said that let's go over to the website all right, so this is tradingview.com. You can look here, uh, it's, it's a little different, but it's the same thing. I still have my watch list over here, and if we go to the stock, it's still the same thing. Some things you may notice that are different. Right here, they're actually advertising me their services. If you've never been on TradingView and don't have a TradingView account, I have a referral link down below in the description that gets you $15 off your first membership. And just a heads up, by no means do you need to have a TradingView membership. I actually do have a TradingView membership. It's mostly to get rid of the ads and so I can have a few more charts open. But if you're just looking at one thing at a time, you don't need the membership. Uh, what we're going to start out by doing is actually going to the SPY. And I want to show you how I have my chart set up. So online, again, same thing, but a little different. If you want to actually see the chart where you can mark it up like we're about to, you want to click on launch chart whenever you look for it. And now it looks just like my desktop platform did. All right. So uh, this right here, this is my favorites bar. For the remainder of this video, I'm going to show you how to set this up and use the tools in this favorites bar so you can mark up charts on your own, do your own research and plan your trades. So starting out, we have this stuff over here. The only reason I use the favorites bar over this right here is that some of these categories kind of nest and it really slows down me trying to chart. Most days I will come in and I will chart uh, pretty much, I guess about seven stocks in the morning, just looking for what I want to trade and, and having everything up here just makes it so much faster. All right, so to start off this first little category, this is really just picking your cursor. So there's a cross like this, there's a dot, there is an arrow, and there's an eraser. All right, and if I had anything charted on here, this eraser, I would just click on it and it would get rid of what I had charted. I don't know what this magic is, what is this? Oh, okay. That's cool. Got a little magic going. All right. So that's just a little fun. They don't have that on the desktop platform, but going back, I have the cross selected. And uh, now looking at the trend line tools, there are three that I have favorited. If you want to favorite something, you just click on the star and it adds it. I'm going to remove that. Uh, and first one we'll look at is the trend line. Uh, basically what the, let me move this out of the way. 
Basically what the trend line does is it allows you to draw two points and connect the points. You can move the trend line, uh, you can move the points, but basically it just, it's just a straight line for you. So I'm gonna delete that. Next up, oh wait, hold on. Next up, we have a horizontal line and it's exactly what it sounds like. The horizontal line is gonna be a horizontal line going across the entire chart. If I zoom out, it's still there. And yeah, that's the horizontal line. Oh wait, let me, and you can also, you know, grab it and move it up and down. Uh, next one we have is the horizontal ray. So almost like the horizontal line. So so almost like the horizontal line, but it's going to be from wherever you draw your point, and it's only going to go to the right. So uh, right here, you see, I put my point right here, and it's at that level to the right. But you can also grab it, move it to the right, to the left, and it'll kind of go from wherever you have it. So. I'm, uh, Take that, delete that. And then last, okay, that's the last one on there. All right, then next up in this category, uh, out of all the Fibonacci's, the only Fibonacci I have is Fibonacci retracement. And yeah, this, if, if you are going by how I trade on this channel and, and, and wanna uh, model your trading style kind of like me, this will be the only thing you want in this category. And I can also show you how to adjust it real quick. So there are all these levels you can add to your Fibonacci. And I think they will probably, it'll probably be a lot messier than this when you first sign on. So basically to pull this up, you just double click on the Fibonacci. And what you're gonna do is uncheck everything. So notice I'm adding checks over here is adding all these extra levels and really making it a jumbled mess. So I'm just going to remove all the unnecessary stuff now. And the, the point of charting is to make things simpler for you to bring your eyes to what you need to focus on. So yeah, that is what I am focused on right now. Oh, hold up. I ask, oh, need to check the zero. All right, so all I have checked is 0 0.618 and, or 618, 1 and 0.5. All right, I'm gonna click, can't see it, but that says okay. And yeah, I'm gonna clear that out now. Next up in the next category, you don't need anything from this category. So I'm Going to move on to the next. All right, and then over here, we have the short position tool, or long position tool, short position tool, and price range. And what these tools do, all this is gonna be all your forecasting. It says projection. These are gonna be your trade planning tools. So if you want to buy a call, uh, buy the stock, and you know make a trade, this is how you plan. This, these are gonna be how you plan it. So I'm gonna click on long position and say, say all this wasn't here and I was looking at it and I was like, oh yeah, this looks like a good spot to buy. I would, you know, come in here, set my stop loss, set my target. Right there, it tells me, oh, it is a four to one risk to reward ratio. It's pretty much risking one fourth of what I could potentially make from this move which is good information to know, you know, you don't want it looking more like this. So going in with a good risk to reward, this kind of this, this kind of helps you know that you're on track. And this is how you would do it uh, on the long position. And here, let me double click and show you, uh, you can change the style by like clicking on here. This is how I have mindset, I have mindset on this, this green right here. And I have my stop set on black and it's at a 13% on opacity, but you can change the color to whatever, but this is kind of what works for me. And uh, it's, I believe it's usually like the stop is usually red. 
But the reason you're probably not going to want to do red is because it really uh, affects your psychology. The same reason that my candles aren't the typical red and green. It's, instead, it's blue and black. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take that off now. And the same thing, but the opposite is the short position. So if you click and decide, hey, I want to short sell, buy put, anything like that, and kind of take advantage of that right there. It's the same thing to the downside, and you would adjust this the same way as well. Let me delete that now. Oh, wait, I double clicked it. But yeah, I'm going to delete that. And last but not least, we got the price range tool. So over here, you draw your price range. Uh, this will show you how much movement potential there is. So right there, that is a 1.7% move on the SPY. Is eight eight dollars is a one point seven percent move on the spy that is eight hundred and twenty four points or eight dollars and twenty four cents on the spy. So yeah, it's just good for projection. If you want to see how I have that set up, uh, this oh wait, this is how I have it set up. So background opacity to twenty one and yeah, all right get that off the chart. Then over here in this category, uh, you have your different brushes. So you got your brush, your highlighter, I'm actually gonna remove the highlighter. I don't use that that much. Uh, you're definitely gonna want the rectangle. This is how I draw my supply and demand zones. And also like if I wanna highlight a range or anything, I will use that. You can adjust the color cause I'll use different colors for different things. You adjust the color by, uh, of course, clicking on it and then just kind of, yeah, just picking a color. So I'm going to delete that now. The next in here, we have path. All right. Make sure you're listening right here because when I first got this, I was so confused. So on the path tool, pretty much every time you click, it's going to be a point. So right there, first point. All right, second point is right there. Another point. All right, another point. Say I wanna be done. I wouldn't click the button again because it makes another point. When I wanna be done, I left click and it allows me to be done. So that's something that you can use to just kinda make examples, do more projection, but it's, it's a good uh, drawing tool. Uh, next up, we have the circle tool, and this is going to be good for just highlighting and visuals. So this is more of a, I would say a teaching tool or explaining tool, but yeah, this just shows, Hey, there's a pivot point here, or Hey, this is a point of interest, you know, is use it how you want. Maybe if you're not trying to teach or explain anything to anyone, maybe this isn't as valuable to you, but this is one I definitely got to have in the pocket. So I'm delete that and then over here I got text so this is just if I want to type something you know right there it's like oh hi there you go what's up y'all all right and then next we got call out so right here this just allows you to like move have something more removed Just a cool little tool that you can use to mark up your charts. Uh, most of this stuff is like kind of more useful in a teaching situation, but if you want to make notes for yourself in the future, it's also helpful. And then last but certainly not least, price labels. So sometimes your stuff's far off to the side, you want to know where it is, or if you want to, you know, if you do something with price targets, you come in with price labels and every, oh wait, and every time you press a price label instead of having to go all the way over you just have them there so i'm going to come over here remove the drawings my chart is clear and and that is my setup for trading view when it comes to what stocks to trade ultimately you want to find stocks that are popular that people have their eyes on one that will always be good to trade is the spy which is spy or spyu which is a leveraged etf 
if you're trying to swing the shares. So if you're trying to trade this buy and want to write it up, uh, the SPYU is going to give you 4x the percentage move and cost a lot less than the SPY. But for those of you that are trading options watching this, the SPY is going to be better for you because you can't trade options on SPYU. All right, so right here, we're looking at the anatomy of a candlestick and what you need to understand about a candlestick. Just like anything else, red is bad, green is good. So red is going to be the candlesticks that are going down. Green is going to be the candlesticks that are going up. Some things that aren't mentioned on this graphic are going to be the fact that each candlestick that you see represents a certain amount of time. Uh, how much time it represents is going to depend on what time frame chart you're on and that's something we'll go over later in this video but just know this candle could represent one second one minute one hour 10 minutes 10 days a week a month candles can pretty much represent any time frame uh, it just depends on what time frame chart you're on now looking at the actual anatomy of the candle the large part that is filled in this is going to be known as the body and the cool thing about candles is each one tells a story. If it's red, the open is going to be at the top. And what the open is, is when the candle started, this is where the price of the candle was. These little sticks at the end of the candle are referred to as the wick. And the top of the wick is going to be the highest that the candle reached in that time frame. And the bottom of the wick is going to be the lowest price it reached in that time frame. So far, we have gone on over the open, the high, and the low. The close is going to be the price that the candle was at whenever that candle ran out of time and closed. So we opened up here and we came down here, which means overall we ended up selling off, which is why this candle is red. Now, taking this candle and looking at the opposite, of course, the high and low are still going to be the same. You still have your wig. You still have your body. But now, uh, this is actually something that could happen on the charts. If we came from this candle right here, this red one, and moved on to the next one, this candle right here is a bullish candle or a green candle. If I haven't said it yet, uh, when you see red candles or when you see the market going down, it's considered to be bearish. And when you see green candles, a lot of green candles and the markets going up is considered to be bullish. Looking at this green or bullish candle, the open, the close are right here on the bearish candle and on the bullish candle, the open is now, the open is right here. The close was over here. So the story that is telling is we may have opened here, continued coming down, possibly come back up and then once we came back up, we reached a high up here and ultimately closed right there. That's everything you need to know about candlesticks. You'll be able to practice this more when we get in the charts. This is the part where you learned how to analyze a trend. There are going to be three kinds of trends that you see in the market. There is an uptrend, which consists of higher highs and higher lows. So right here, looking at this, we have, uh, we can call this a low. And then we have a high right here. But now we have another low right here, but it's higher than the first. So this is a higher low. This is a higher high. So now that we see we have a higher high and a higher low, that means we're in an uptrend. We put in another higher low, another higher high. The trend continues. Now going on, looking at our next kind of trend, we have a downtrend. So say we start up here. This is going to be our high. This is going to be our low. We get another high, but it's not as high. So now we have a lower high and we have another low. And now we are officially in a downtrend because we have a lower high and a lower low. And then the trend just continues on and right there, uptrend, downtrend, those are going to be your main kind of trends. Now going on, looking at your final kind of trend, can you guess it? It's going to be same highs, same lows. And what this is, this can be referred to as consolidation, trading sideways, 
Usually when you see this, a larger move is loading up. But the reason it's important to know what trend you're in is because this is where the money is found. If you find out what trend you're in, you're able to see, oh, okay, we're likely to reverse here. We're like likely to continue the trend as we have been going. And it's just each one of these swings is money. So if you're trading, looking at this chart from here to here, that's about $3. If you want to trade to the downside, that's about $2. Going back to the upside, that's about $3. So whenever you're able to see the trend, whenever you're able to recognize what pattern you're in, you're better able to catch all this free money that is here. This is a critical skill. I'm going to show you how to draw trend lines and support and resistance. I want you to know that the higher time frames. Are going to have more weight than the lower time frames the higher time frames take longer to occur and all the lower time frames occur within them so looking at them uh, i'm going to start out on the weekly chart we're looking at paypal i'm going to come here on the one week and look at the trend all right so looking here seeing what trends i can see you already know for how these candles work for me they're going to be black and blue and the blue candles are going to be representative of what would normally be green and the black is going to be representative of what would normally be red so looking here just looking for trends how i'm going to draw these trend lines it's like like you can draw the trend lines at the top of the wick if you want like it's it's fine but it's also 100 percent okay if the wick kind of pokes through the most important thing when it comes to drawing trend lines is that the body kind of respects it and then for instance if you get something like this this is what's referred to as a false breakout but we'll get more into that later the main thing that's going to be important when you're drawing trend lines is you really just want at least two touches so we have a touch over here we have a touch over here we have a third touch and usually the more touches you get on a trend line the closer it is to either smacking the stock down or the stock breaking up and bursting through it so right here we have a trend line uh, we kind of broke through it and let me continue this trend line see see where it went so we had a false breakout uh, we kind of came and tested it again and broke down and then over here we finally broke so us breaking and coming over to this side of the trend line is a good thing. Whenever we're below the trend line, the trend line is serving as resistance and resistance is going to be a level that we have a hard time getting above. When we get above it, it's going to serve as support, which is going to be like the floor, which is going to be a level that we have a hard time going below. So now we have this as support. Um, you can see we're kind of further away. And now we're going to look and see if we can see any other trend lines or any er other areas of support. So right here, now I'm going to draw support about right here. And how I'm looking at this is this is an area where we get a lot of touches. We get a touch over here. Uh, we, of course, kind of like touch, touch right over here as well. Um, it becomes resistance over here once again we come above touch it again come up here touch it again come up here touch it again and so we have a lot over here and then we came back down touch it again so right here whenever you see that these are going to be your major levels now looking and seeing that we have all these touches over here i drew this as support right here and you can see like even if you just went like at this point in time and we haven't been here you know once we come here oh it's going to have a hard time getting below this and just from what we can see right now if i were to draw a level of resistance i would draw the resistance right here so over here you can see kind of has some trouble getting above it over here a little trouble three times over here another one over here another one over here another one here another one here and maybe this time we'll finally get through and break through but maybe we will get slapped back down and come back down here 
All right, so this is the weekly chart. This is how I come and draw these trend lines. So you can see I have resistance, which is the level we have trouble getting above, support, which we have trouble getting above, and then right now I have this downward trend line. So the ones at the angle are kind of going to be trend lines, but trend lines are also serving as support and resistance too. All right, going on, dropping down to a lower time frame. I'm now going to drop down to the four hour. And this is where I like to be if I'm more swing trading over a few days or a week or two. So looking at this right here, I can see that there is a trend like right here. If I draw right here, looks like we're kind of respecting this trend line right here. So you can see looking at this right here, kind of get a touch here. Uh, we get a touch here. Uh, we get another touch here and it kind of just slides up here. And then we kind of come and we pretty much touch it again right here. Maybe if I move it up a little like that, you can see here this trend line is being respected. So now just looking at my strategy, I probably, I wouldn't have entered here because I need to see the trend. We got our second touch here and then we came back and kind of retested the trend line. So looking at it, this is what I would see as my potential target just based off of these trend lines. Using these trend lines, um, you want to ride from support to resistance, from resistance to support. All right, like if it rejects here, it might come down to resistance. And, and what we would be expecting if we broke below this trend line over here, if it came over and did something kind of like this and then just kind of trade sideways. What I'm looking for if this happens is for it to come down to this area because this area looks like it could be, this area looks like it could be a level of, and if it continues to go through, I am looking for it to come test this area down to maybe this area because this like this support area is kind of like a range whenever you get on the lower time frames on the higher time frames it's hard to draw an exact line it's more of like an area so that's going to be how you draw trend lines now to give you a quick example and taking a look at the real chart going up uh, you can see right here looking at this starting right here you got a low right here, you got a high, you got a higher low, higher high, kind of consolidate for a little bit here. So in this little period is sideways, but then you get a low, you get a high, more consolidation, a high. And depending on what time frame you're on, you can see that overall it's an uptrend. So right now this is the one hour, overall it's an uptrend, four hour. Right now it's in an uptrend. Daily, you're seeing that we're trading sideways and this is the importance of time frames. Now taking a look at the chart, taking a look at the trend, uh, let's say I just drew a trend line right here and we could say, hey, this is a trend. Let's say, hey, we are currently in an upward trend and I think we're gonna keep going until we run up to the next level. So from here we run, uh, we break a level and now that we are above here, we know we still have this trend line right here that we're respecting. And because of that, now that we see, hey, here is an entry, your entry ideal, ideally would be right here and your exit would be right here. So taking a look using risk versus reward, uh, I want to show you, we'll use the long position tool because it's going up, but say we decide to enter let me zoom in for you. Say we decide to enter right here on this candle and right at the line. And say we wanted to make our stop loss a little past this previous low and make our target this next level of resistance right up here where I have this line drawn. Right here you can see risk to reward ratio is 5.08. 
Uh, personally, anything above three to me is good. So even if you wanted to widen your stop to have a higher potential of not being stopped out, that would be okay. So me putting on max loss right here, uh, we're at this next level of kind of support and resistance. And you can see we still have a 3.07 risk to reward ratio. Now let's take a look at what this means here. Let me clear this out. All right, so looking at this trade, let's say we make let's let's say we make this trade. All right, so let's say we take the trade and we get stopped out. So our entry is right here and our stop is right here about a dollar and 30 cents away. All right, so we failed the trade. Say we take the trade again and we lose on the trade. All right, so now we are down about 260. And let's say on the third time, we actually take the trade and we win. Like we ride it like from here all the way up to our target. So we have two losses being 260 and we have one win being about $4. We were wrong twice on this trade. Right now we have a 33% win ratio, but looking at these trades, we would be up about $140. This is the kind of risk to reward ratio you wanna look for when you're trading. These are the kind of things you wanna consider when you're trading. I personally find a 3.0 or better to be just money. If I'm on the lower time frame, maybe I'll look for a two to one, but on the four hour, I like at least seeing a three. Real quick, looking at a trade, if I intended on taking this trade right here and riding it up, so right here, this represents my stop loss. So my stop loss is usually going to target a previous key level. So for instance, I'm probably going to target this low, or maybe I'll try to put it a little bit past this low, this area where I am seeing this resistance. This, this is what it looks like on the four hour chart. On the one hour chart, it might look a little different. So this looks like the next key level or this looks like the next key level I would target. So my stop loss is here. And as you can see, we have that risk reward ratio of three. Now, when it comes to setting a stop loss, there are two types of stop losses. So for instance, just, just looking at the price action, which is the movement of the stocks, uh, you have an expansion right here, which is where the stock moves aggressively so for instance right here it comes up and then it kind of chills so it's it's just aggressive buying it's very bullish right here then it kind of consolidates for a little bit then aggressive buying and then now it looks like it might be consolidating a little bit so for me once it's like okay it looks like it's consolidating this is where i consider looking for a stop loss and what i will try to do after i'm up so much is look for hey where's that next level it could pull back to but i want to make sure it's in profit to make sure i lock in some profits so looking at it say we bought in right here 64 65 ran up to 66 and now sideways trading is over here i might move my stop loss to 65 or maybe looking at the trail if we have a trailing stop loss a trailing stop would work a little different and be underneath so for instance say we entered right here at 64 67 the way a trailing stop loss works if we wanted to have like a 50 cent trail so we entered at 64 67 let's say we had about yeah, right there, 64.12. Or we came up as high as 66.40. So once we got up to 66.40, the trail would be about 65.90. And we never pulled back to there. So looks like if we would have set a trailing stop, this trail or this trade ended up going for about $2.56 and the beauty of a trailing stop is you don't have to sit there and manage it. Now, if you're there and you can sit there and manage a trade, as the stop goes up, okay. So you bought here, okay, move your stop there. 
okay, you ran up here, bought here, and you ran up here, okay, new stop. Or maybe new stop somewhere in between. All right, oh, now you ran up here, maybe new stop up here. And now that you're up here consolidating, maybe new stop right here. You want to progressively move it if you're using a regular stop loss. So that's going to be how you set your stop. Now, when it comes to taking profits, you want to take profit once you hit your target. So for instance, if you have multiple shares, uh, this is when you should be sold out of most of them. You can also sell out of some of them as you get on the way to them. But ultimately, this is where your goal is. If you're doing something like trading options, uh, you might want to start selling out of some early on just because you're going to be making profits in higher percentages earlier on and uh, you have time decay and all these other factors to worry about. But if you're just trading the stock, uh, you want to ride from trend line to trend line or support to resistance. That's going to be ideal. Or for me, sometimes I don't ride it exactly. Maybe it's like, okay, we're right here and we're about like 30 or 40 cents away. I'll just take profits here and just wait for the next entry because profit is profit or or just set the stop like right there. Uh, your stop loss getting hit is one way to take profit or just having your take profit in there is another way. Really quickly, I want to talk about what brokerages I use for what things. The easiest one by far is going to be Robinhood to use, but they're going to be lacking in some of the features. But the things I love about Robinhood is how easy they are to use and the fact that they have instant deposit. So those are the reasons to go to Robinhood. Uh, next up, we have Moomoo. Uh, Moomoo is going to be the best when it comes to research. It's going to be a little bit more complicated to use, but it's not more complicated to use because it's hard to use. It's actually pretty easy to use. The only reason it seems hard to use is just going to be hard coming from Robinhood because when it comes to other brokerages, uh, other professional brokerages, uh, Moomoo, I still consider it to be very easy to use compared to something like a Fidelity or whatnot. So Moomoo is going to be the best with the tools. If you're trying to chart on the app, also pretty nice for that. If you're actually trying to look at the charts because we Robinhood's charts are very limited. And then last but not least, Robinhood and Moomoo are good for options as well. Interactive brokers, you can trade options on it, but I don't personally trade options on it. I strictly like to stick to shares on this. And the beauty of interactive brokers is if you're using TradingView and you want to have your trades actually executed through TradingView, like your buys and sells, and just use TradingView, uh, you can hook up interactive brokers in trading view and just trade using trading view so all the stop losses and everything all the alerts and whatnot that you set uh, all that can be done using trading view if you're using interactive brokers so if you're interested in any of these hey, be sure to check out the links down below in the description especially if you're looking at Moomoo. right now Moomoo is offering up to 20 free stocks when you sign up and make a deposit so be sure to check that out because i've never seen it this nice but going on with the video, also wanted to drop in an honorable mention. When it comes to staying up to date with news, I have the CNBC app and there's also a website called Forex Factory. All right, so this is a website called ForexFactory.com. Uh, if you want to filter yours to look like mine, this little green thing right here, you can check it to make it look like mine. I'll hit apply filter. And this just kind of tells you what economic events to expect. So. This is Forex Factory. Uh, this tells you, this can tell you what potential times you'll see moves in the market. This is the CNBC app. Uh, this too is a free app. Um, I have it set to kind of give me notifications on like interesting stocks, uh, like major stocks. So this morning it told me about Walmart's earnings or if Elon Musk does something with Tesla. It just gives me a headline. So just wanted to throw this in the video for an honorable mention. I have a fresh Robinhood account right here. Uh, what we're going to do here is I'm just going to go through how to buy, how to sell and set your stops and limits and whatnot. All right. So we were looking at PayPal earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, type in PayPal's ticker. And what I'm going to do is I am going to hit buy. The beautiful thing about Robinhood and Moomoo is that you can buy fractional shares if you don't have the money to buy entire shares. So I'm going to buy $50 worth. I'm going to hit review. 
and then I'm going to swipe up to submit the order. That's that's how I would do if I wanted to buy it like that. But I also want to show you if you want to buy in shares, you can be a little more specific. You can do 0 0.8, 0 0.7. And right now it looks like it's only letting you put in a market order. So I'm going to come over. I'm actually just going to buy in dollars. I'm going to do 50. I'm going to hit review. And then I'm going to swipe up to submit. So right there, you can see I bought the average price per share is 67.72. Shares purchase, uh, 0.73, and then I'm going to hit done. Now scrolling down, you can see that I am currently down like really small fragments of a cent. Um, it's 30% of this portfolio. And if I want to get in or out, I hit trade, I would hit sell and come up here I would you can sell in dollars sell in shares you can set a limit order which is hey if I want to sell this if I want to sell it at seventy dollars I would hit put seventy as a limit price or seven fifty and then twenty four hours market is twenty four hours like it sounds extended hours is like a couple hours before the market opens and a couple hours after and market hours is eight thirty to three p m eastern it shows you the time so if I did that, I would hit continue and then if you don't hit good till cancelled, your order will be cancelled uh same day so just know that now I'm gonna back out because that's a limit order going on taking a look uh this is a trailing stop. Trailing stop order follows the order. So if I wanted to do like a 50 cent trail, this is how I would set that up. So you can do a percentage. Uh, I personally prefer to go trail amount when I'm trading shares. So say I did 50 cents. This is what that would look like. So right now the market price is at 67.71. As this moves up, the stock price is gonna get higher. All right, and then last, but certainly not least, we have your stop order, which is trading at 67.70. If I say, okay, I'm going to cut my losses if it falls down to 67.20, that's how I would put that in. And then last but not least, this is the one that confuses the most people you have a stop limit. So the way this works is you set your stop price. If it's like, hey, if it comes down here, I want to sell out here. You're going to need to set your limit price below whenever it comes to a stop limit. So it's like, okay, it's triggered at this price and sell it if it comes down here. So right here, your stop price would be, uh, let's say 65, you hit continue, and then your limit price and if you want your order to actually be filled, you need to make sure it's the same or lower. You could set it for 65 or lower. You can set it higher. That doesn't make much sense. All right, so I'm just going to back out. That is, that's, that's how you buy. That's how you sell. Thinking about trading options? Check out this video right here. But to be honest, I wouldn't quite recommend trading options until you have a good understanding of the charts, until you've gotten the hang of the way the stock that you intend to trade likes to move. If you haven't already taken advantage of it, hey, be sure to check out the Moomoo referral link down below in the description. Right now, when you open an account and make a deposit using that link, they're offering up to 20 free stocks for doing so. This is the best sign up bonus I've ever seen them offer. If you're interested, be sure to take advantage of it right away because it's going away in 15 days. If you enjoyed the video and learned anything, be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you made this far and haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon so that you don't miss any future content. And last, but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off, and I want to change your life.